So like I said, Grace, this lesson is not so difficult. You should trust me. You'll have a break, don't worry. Yes. Uh, okay. Uh, so, why do we care about electricity? Well, we care about electricity because of its ability to do work. So we care about electricity because it can do stuff for us. It can do work for us. As an example, so electricity is important because it can do work. It has power. But we haven't said what, how to calculate the power. So electricity is a form of energy. You remember this lesson about all the types of energy? You have chemical, heat, electrical, all these types. And do you remember what one volt means? It means that one coulomb could do one joule of work. So if you remember what we were saying, um, here is one coulomb. And if the voltage here is one volt, then it means this coulomb could do one joule of work. That one volt is the same as one joule per coulomb. Um, so if you remember this, if you just think about that, and if you remember it, you might say, okay, well, what's if I had two coulombs and one volt, how much work could I do? Well, if I had two coulombs with one volt, I could do two joules of work. Because each one would do one joule. And then if I had, if I had, let's go back, one coulomb, but if I had two volts, no? How much work could I do? Mm. Well, that, yeah, I could do two joules. Mm. Because that one coulomb, if it has two volts, it could do two joules of work. So then if you think about it, you could work out how much work could be done in total by just multiplying the Q by the V. So this is instead Q and the voltage is instead V, the total work that could be done is just Q multiplied by V. So this is our formula for how much work can be done. It's the charge multiplied by the voltage. That's my first formula here. Uh, I'll explain the next one in a minute. Just write the first one down. Whoops, too much. So I just need you to write down work equals QV. Now, uh, actually I'll write it here. Work equals QV. Is that that? Yeah. But, if you remember, does anyone remember a formula for Q? Yes. IT. Very good. So if I put that in here, I get W equals ITV. Now I divide by T. So I get W over T equals IV. But what does W over T equals? Power. Power. So now you get power equals IV. So this is important and this one's important. Okay. Now, maybe we don't know the I, maybe we don't know the V. We can use this triangle, V-I-R, to replace what we don't know. So 
So for example, let's imagine we don't know the V. So what does V equal from this triangle? Yeah, so V is I times R, so you could write this as I squared R. Maybe we don't know the I. What does the I equal? Uh, v over R. V over R. So you could say P equals V squared over R. So you could write this a uh, different way. Or uh, I is V over R. So it would be V by V oh. over R. So this formula, the key formula for this lesson, you can write it in two different, uh, three different ways. But this is the key formula. Power is IV, current multiplied by voltage. And also, this is also key, work done is QV. So these are the two key formulas so far. You got all of this? Mm. Yep, okay. So I just uh, write the formulas down, but you have them already. Okay. When a current is running through a resistor, initially uh, there has been no charge passed through it until at some point there is a charge Q. All the time the voltage stays constant. So let me draw this graph. So what we have here, here is a resistor, here is a switch, here is a power supply, this is OR, this is V, and this is I. So let's have a look at the graph. I put, uh, I mean, what do I want to put on the axis? Um, voltage against charge. So I'll put voltage here and I'll put uh, charge here. And I'll stick a little voltmeter here. Okay, so at the beginning when the switch is open, there's no um, there's no current going through this resistor. And then when I close the switch, what happens? Well, current will pass through. So let's say the current, for example, let's say the current was 1 amp. Well, 1 amp means 1 coulomb per second. So each second, a coulomb travels through the uh, resistor for example. And what about the voltage? Well, the voltage V here will be the same as the voltage here. I mean, you can use Kirchhoff, but you know that um, if I go around in a loop, you have V here minus V here must equal zero. So, anyway, you know that this here must equal this. So the voltage stays the same. So as the charge increases, after one second, how many coulombs? One. After two seconds, how many coulombs? Two, and so on. So even though the charge is increasing, the voltage stays the same. So the graph looks like this. What is the area of this graph? It's Q multiplied by... V, this is Q, and this is V, so the area is QV. But what does QV represent? It's the work. So my point is, when you have a graph with a charge on the X and voltage on the Y, the area of the graph is the work done. Okay, so, uh, you know, it'll probably look like this. No current, no current. Then you close the switch and all of a sudden you get a current. And then you turn the switch off and then no more current. And this voltage is here. And this here is the total charge. 
So this area here on the graph, that's the work done. Yep, continue. So I made you the graph. Key result here is notice that the area equals the work done on the voltage against charge graph. Yeah? Okay, so what happens if we have a capacitor now? More interesting. So we have a capacitor. Uh, and then we have, well, we could have the capacitor and then we could have the resistor if you want, but just the capacitor first, maybe. And then the power. Okay, so let's try and draw the graph here. Um, v and Q. So when I close the switch, the capacitor gets a Q. Does the Q, how does the Q change? We, we did this last week. If you remember, the Q increases like this. So does it not like the resistor, it doesn't just increase at once, it slowly increases. Yeah? So the Q slowly increases. Um, now, what happens to the vo if I put a voltmeter here, what happens to this voltage? Is it going to be the same as this? Well, it will be, but not at the start. What happens at the start? increases in the same way, doesn't it? Yes? Now, if I divide these, I get Q over V equals Q0 over V0. So that means V equals V0 over Q0 Q. Now, I want you to compare here on this graph. The V is like Y and the Q is like X. So here you have something like Y equals a constant multiplied by the X. So what type of graph is this? A graph like this? What type is it? Come on. Don't make me talk to Roland. Yeah, what type of graph is this? Is it a curve? No, it's is it a quadratic? It's is it a cubic? <laughs> is it what? What is it? Y equals mx is oh, a... It's a linear thank you. It's a linear. Not only is it linear, but where does it cross the y-axis? Which is? Uh, the y. Which Come is on. The Yeah, but what? No, no, you're talking too much and not doing enough thinking. Where does this graph cross the y-axis? Where do I draw it? Oh, zero because it's there's no c. There's no c. Yeah. The c is zero. There's no c here. Plus zero. Oh. So the graph looks like this. So what shape is this? Triangle. So for a capacitor, the area is a triangle. So that means the work is a half QV. But remember we have the formula C equals Q over V. So what does Q equal? 
CV. So if I put that back in here, we get this formula. Work is a half CV squared. So this is how much work a capacitor can do with capacitance C charged with a voltage V. It's how much energy is stored in the capacitor. they could ask you this in the exam. However, in the last 30 exams, this question where they ask you to prove this uh, appeared exactly zero times. So I'm saying this proof here of this formula could be on the exam, but so far they've asked it zero times, which makes me think it won't be on the exam. Okay, continue. Right, so we've drawn our graph, we have these formulas, and now the graph, we just shown it. So you have our formula, which you wrote down, a half CV squared for the capacitor. Right, let's have a look at some questions. So let's see, we have we have two questions and then you can take your break. Great. So uh, write this one down. Finished? Just the question. Yeah? Right, let's have a look at it. So the first thing is, let's just do a quick picture. We have 220 volts. And this is uh, into a large oven. Oops, let me draw the picture for you. And uh, we'll put a chicken. I think a chicken sounds good. We'll put a chicken inside or something. Yes. Uh, right. What? Yeah, why not? Yeah. Um, okay, so this power of this oven is 10 kilowatts, so that's 10,000 watts. So the first question is, what is the current? Okay, so we have P equals IV, so therefore I equals P over B, which will be 10,000 over 220, 
which will be 45.5 uh, 45 45.5 amps so the current here is 45.5 amps yeah B is what is the resistance so of course this is doing some work yeah what work is it doing it's providing heat to kill the chicken mm -hmm. yeah so uh, we can say that um, we can use our triangle and we can say that or equals V over I which is 220 over 45.5 So that is 4.84 ohms. C. How much charge has been passed through one hour? Q, Q equals IT, which is 45.5 times 3600. which is, um, if I put this in kilo, oh. is 164 kilo coulombs. Yeah. And then lastly, how much work has this oven done? So the work done is... Uh, yes, actually, yeah, you could... Uh, Amanda has a point. You have a choice. You can say... Power is work over time, so work is power multiply time, or you can use the other formula, work is QV. Which do you want to use? Oh. <laughs> Fine, we'll get the same answer. So work equals 10,000 multiply 3,600, or work equals 164,000, multiply 220 so this equals 36 mega uh, joules and this one here equals 36 mega joules same answer continue okay so um, I'll draw it for you so what you have here Oh no, that's back. You have a capacitor, you have a light, and then you have your, uh, it's charged up. So there was, a, there was a, there was a battery, a cell here. And then it's charged and it's removed. So it was charged up with 120 volts. This capacitance was 100 milli farads. This resistor here is 100 ohms. So you charge it up and then you remove this. So it's just the capacitor and then the resistor. Okay, so my first question is, what's the charge in the capacitor? So the first question is, what's the Q? You can draw this if you want. All right, what formula could I use to get the Q? No. Nope. No. Nope. C equals Q over V. So Q equals CV. So that's 0 0.100 times 120. So that is 12 coulombs.
Ja? Nou? Hmm? Why is it crossed out? Oh, because we use the cell to charge the capacitor, and then once it's charged, then we remove it. We don't need it anymore. So you only you only need to use to charge. And then once it's charged, you don't care about it anymore. It's just uh, capacitor and light. Mm -hmm. Is it okay? Yeah. yeah. Secondly, how much energy is stored here in the capacitor? So the formula, do you remember? The energy stored in the capacitor? How much energy does it have? How much work can it do? No? For capacitor, it's a half CB squared. So this capacitor could do 720 joules uh, of work. The B is what's the W? How much um, how much energy is stored in here? Yeah. Okay, the last one you should remember from last time is how long until the capacitor has no energy left in it. What's the formula for that? The time to fully discharge. Anyone remember what that is? No, 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 somebody must remember, I'm sure. The time for all the charge to go. Thank you. So he, five time constants. And what's the formula for the time constant? Uh, yeah, what's the time constant? Time constant equals... Time constant equals... Could it be or C maybe? It is, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. So 5 times 100 times 0 0.100 equals 50 seconds. 100. Remember? Yeah. And lastly, what is the power. Now, of course, the power is not constant. What happens when the capacitor um, discharges? Does the light get brighter? No. Dimmer? Stays the same? Dimmer. It gets dimmer, doesn't it? But we could say an average. So we could do power on average. Average power would be the work divided by the time. Now, I know it's not this. I know what's happening is the power is decreasing. So it's really important that you understand it's uh, average power. So it's roughly 720 divided by 50. Average. Because um, the... Oh, It's about this. So at the start, does the light bulb does it have more or less power than this? More. more. And then at the end, what's the power? It was yeah, well, zero. Yeah. So the power I know it goes down like this. Mm. I know this. You know this too. Mm. Just like the voltage goes down, the current goes down, the power goes down. So this is just the average power for 50 seconds. It's about this power. At the beginning, it's more than this, and at the end, it's less than this. 
Okay, the homework for this one. I'm going to close this now. Yes. Now take a five.